Hello guys and welcome back to another video on the channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking about the season and giving you guys a overall on how I believe the players went and giving you guys an opinion on how I rated their performance throughout the season. We start off with the goalkeepers. Marek Steck, he kept us in a lot of games at the start of the season, making fantastic saves. Towards the end of the season, he was making mistakes at the wrong time when we actually needed the points. He was dropped at the right time of the season. James Shea, he came in, he done the job. He only had one bad game and that was against Crew. I think this season as well, having two very good goalkeepers makes a massive difference. As if one of them makes mistakes, you can replace them with the other goalkeeper. You can just keep replacing them. And that's really good. And it's really good to have a competition for places. For me, I see competition as a positive. Some people think it as a negative. For me, having competition helps players and it helps the fans as well, in a way. It helps the players as they have to fight for the place. And it helps the fans think, okay... It's not too bad. We've got another decent goalkeeper. Moving on to the defence. Dan Potts last season has improved massively. In the air, he's so good. Ever since like Wilkinson has left the club, we've been lacking that attacking threat from corners and free kicks. Dan Potts brings that. Mullins. Now, Mullins, for me, he stepped in where needed this season. He scored a vital goal against Notts County at home. Due to, like, Sheehan and Glenn Ray performing really well this season, he hasn't had too much game time. Rumours have it he's going to Cheltenham. Scott Cuthbert started the season really well, had a few injuries which has left him out of the team. Unfortunately, though, he is out of contract in the summer. I don't see him staying at the club. I just don't think he has that ability to play against better League One players. Jack Stacey, very, very... Very good going forward. Forced Justin out of the side completely this season. A lot of people don't realise with Jack Stacey is that when he plays, he doesn't get any like cover in front of him. And he sometimes he has to play against two players, so the attacker and the fullback. Not many people realise that. So defensively, Jack Stacey's done really well this season. Moving on to Glenn Ray. For me, he hasn't been praised enough this season. He's got passion for the club and his performances on the pitch have said a lot. I really want him to sign a new deal. He can obviously play centre-back. He can obviously play CDM as well when needed. And this season, he's formed a really good partnership with Sheehan. James Justin hasn't played as many games as he would have liked to this season. Jack Stacey and Dan Potts have kept him out of the side. The one game in the season where I thought, wow, James Justin is that type of player is the game against Lincoln at home. He literally changed the game around it. He made when he made it to all. And since then, we haven't seen too much of him. Is this because he's going in the summer? Is it because we accepted a deal in January behind closed doors? Who knows? But I do reckon Justin won't be staying with us next season. Next player I'm going to be talking about is Alan Sheard. Player of the season, in my opinion. It brings that leadership at the back when Cuthbert wasn't there. Really good defensive record with him in the team. Really good on the ball. His deliveries into the box from free kicks and set pieces are fantastic. For me, I would like a, a plan B when it comes to that, apart from give the ball to Potts. But apart from that, this season, Alan Sheehan has been player of the year. Moving on to the midfield, we're going to start off with Jordan Cook. Get rid, in my opinion. Not good enough to play for Luton Town. Haven't seen anything since he's been at Luton, which makes me think, wow, he's a good player. Just get rid of him. Shinny, Shinny started the season really well. He has that quality. Now, don't get me wrong, Shinny hasn't been as good in the second half of the season but he has that quality for me Shinny reminds me of I know it's a bold statement but I'm just giving you an example of Ozil for Arsenal when it comes to the attacking side of things and creating chances Shinny is that type of player however when it comes to like certain away games and when you've got to tackle and like defend he isn't that type of player. He's he's not going to do that. That's not his job. His job is to create goals and create chances. Next player we're going to be talking about is Pelly Roddick. I felt he started the season really well. A lot of fans were getting on his back really early. I just thought he was just lacking a few goals to his name. But at the start of the year, he was doing really well. And then he got sent off in one of... I think it was the game against Chesterfield. And then since then... He hasn't been in the team too much. Luke Berry and Oli Lee have been performing at the club. And then since Luke Berry's injury... Roddix took his chance and he's been performing from the last like games of the season and I think that's been with McCormack's help as well I think McCormack's helped him quite a lot next player we'll be talking about is Ollie Lee now I've just been given a message by my dad and it's a it's proof Ollie Lee has signed for hearts 
Now, I'm kind of gutted with this because I felt Oli Lee should have stayed at the club. He had a really good season, scored a few goals. He's really good on the ball. Technically, he's a really good player. And I'm disappointed that he's gone to Hearts. Now, I don't understand why he's gone to Hearts. Scottish football isn't the best, but I wish him luck in his career. He's a good player. I wish him all the best. I think Hearts are in the Europa League, so that may be the reason why he's left. Who knows, but I wish him all the best and... Yeah, I will be looking out for him in future games. Next player we're going to be talking about is Downs. On loan from Ipswich. Very good player on the ball. Always wants the ball. He always knows what to do when he actually has the ball at his feet as well. Don't see him staying with us next season. Maybe we try and get him on a loan deal. I can't see that happening. He's definitely championship standard, you can tell. He only actually came to Luton for game time. But when McCormack got returned back from injury... There was no question you have to put McCormack back in that team. Next player we're going to be talking about is Luke Gavin. For me, Luke Gavin has, hasn't been treated right. I feel he deserves more game time. Apparently, there's a rumour. Well, I don't say it's a rumour, but according to the players, I think in the programme notes and by the manager as well, Luke Gavin's apparently the worst player in training. So that could be a reason why he hasn't been starting as many games. But for me, you, you shouldn't go by training. You should be going by the game. And if you are performing in matches, then you should be starting, not if you're not performing in training. Next player is Lawson Diaz. Now, since he's signed, he's been injured. He's played the odd game every now and again. I don't see anything from him, to be fair. I think he's just an average League 2 player. Next player is Luke Berry. Luke Berry, for me, off the ball, he is fantastic. His defensive side of things is great. I didn't expect that from him. I thought he was just an attacking player. But he showed a different side of Luke Berry, and I really like that. In a, as watching him on the like, on the pitch... When we're like against it, like the other team are attacking us, he does really well defensively. The only criticism I would have of Luke Berry is that I would like him to take more set pieces. I know that Alan Sheehan is the man for it, but I think Luke Berry gives us a different option. He's also right footed as well, and Sheehan is left footed. So when you when like players take like set pieces, when you're doing it from the left side and when you're doing it from the right side, they're both completely different ways of like crossing the ball, different abilities of delivering the ball into the box. So having Luke Berry do that will give us a different option when it comes to set pieces. Finally, in the midfield, we're talking about Alan McCormack. Alan McCormack, for me, has that leadership, protects the back four very, very well. Started the season really well. I do believe Nathan Jones rushed him um, back from injury. I don't think he should have came back as quick as he did. We Played him too many games. He was playing like midweek, Saturday, midweek, Saturday. We shouldn't have been doing that with him. He's the type of player who gets injured. Before we signed for Luton, he had a lot of injuries. So doing that wasn't right. And then he obviously ha he was injured for a long period of time. Came back into the season, finished the season off really, really well. He is out of contract in the summer. I'll just give him a one-year deal. He has that leadership. He has that, like... He's that type of player who's not afraid to win a ball. Um, he's not afraid to slide tackle. Helps young players as well. He's a good player and he needs to... I believe he should be signing another deal. Moving on to the strikers. Danny Hilton. Where do we start with Danny Hilton? Now, if you guys don't know, I made like a Danny Hilton player highlight video. And I didn't expect this to happen. And around about 9 o'clock, he actually shared my, my video on his actual personal Twitter account. For me, that was like... I made me kind of happy that players appreciate what fans do. And who knows? There could be a few Luton players actually watching this video. It is a long shout, but you, you don't know. You don't know. If he, fa he found the video, so he may have seen. He may have checked out a few of my other videos. But anyway, Danny Hill, uh, we know what he's capable of doing. Obviously, he is going to get that stupid, stupid yellow card. He did it against Notts County. I think one was for arguing and the other one was for, for a stupid elbow. But, yeah, he's that type of player. He's going to do it, but he also gives you so much by scoring goals and creating chances. Without Danny Hilton in the team, we ain't actually the same team believe it or not so for me he's so vital in this team and I think the team is built around Danny Hilton in a way as when he's not in it we just don't it's like we've, we're missing something now we're going to be talking about Jervis from Plymouth Argyle the signing which we made in January now for me he hasn't showed too much of what he's capable of doing um, he doesn't really use his height as well, even though he's kind of tall. He's apparently very quick. I haven't seen that either. So I'm not. I'm a little bit like that with uh, Jervis. So I'm gonna give him like, a season or give him a few more months to see what he's like, what he's like as a player. Because I don't think 
from January to the end of the season, we gave him enough time to show what he's got. James Collins, now Collins signed for us to score goals. Now, we know what he's capable of doing, Collins. He scored goals at Crawley. He's scored goals everywhere he's been. And he's done the exact same at Luton. The only criticism I have of Collins is that every time the ball doesn't go to him, he, like you see his reactions, he's always moaning, he's very aggressive, he's always blaming other players, he's like, why don't you give me the ball? Apart from that, I want him to cut that down, but apart from that, he's a very good player. Next player we're going to be talking about is Elliot Lee. Elliot Lee, for me, oh my god, he is such a dangerous player when he has the ball at his feet and he's running at you. With Elliot Lee, like there's been games this season when he gets subbed off the pitch and I'm thinking, why has he been subbed? And you can see his reaction, he's not happy about that. When he like gets subbed off, he kicks the chair um, like at, in the dugout. He's, he doesn't. He's not very happy when he gets subbed off, and I I agree with that because there's been games where like Hilton's on a yellow or Collins is on a yellow, and they've been performing a lot worse than what he has, and he gets taken off, and that's not fair. And I feel he's been he hasn't been like praised enough this season from fans. And I don't think by Nathan either. And he's a very, very good player. Despite not starting as many games he would have obviously liked to and staying on the pitch as much, he's still scored and created a lot of goals this season. And for that, it's just incredible. Obviously, his brother's now going to Hearts. So it's going to be interesting to see what type of player he's going to be without his brother, Oli. But I still believe he's got that ability and that quality to play higher up. Last player we're going to be talking about is Harry Cornick. For me, Harry Cornick. If he knew how to score goals, he wouldn't be playing for Luton. He has pace, he has energy. Oh my god, his energy. The kid never stops running. He's skillful as well. He gets him out of trouble with his pace. If he just knew how to score goals, this season, the amount of chances he's had. I'm going to be making a player like highlight video about Cornick. And you're going to see the amount of chances this lad has at goal. It's unreal and he doesn't score. He's a good player, a fantastic player. And he's definitely one for the future. So there you have it, guys. That is the player season review of all the players. I gave you my opinion on and giving you how I felt their performances went this season. Smash a like on the video if you did enjoy it and you do agree with what I say. Comment down below your, your thoughts about the video itself. Tell me about what players you felt were standard out and deserve a little bit more credit than what they were getting. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll see you guys on Tuesday when I talk about what players we should be bringing into the club for next season and my predictions on where we will finish if we bring those types of players into the club. And also I'll be talking about any information about Luton if anything happens during that time period from Saturday to Tuesday. So yeah, I'll see you then.